And done. Now that my taxes are done, let's see what's on the agenda today. Piss off teenagers on the internet. Okay. Hi. Lately, there's been a lot of sadness and just darkness in the world. So I thought, why not talk about a dark humor expert and analyze this alpha male's cringe content. Before we get into this video, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze, don't forget to subscribe. The comment highlight in this video is this comment. If this video hurts your feelings, I'm so sorry. In my Russell Hartley video, I mentioned doing a video on alpha male influencers. I think there's so many influencers that fall under the category of alpha male influencers. There's a lot to cover. So in this video in particular, we're going to be only covering one particular alpha male influencer who focuses on dark and edgy humor to battle against snowflakes. Snowflakes are trying to cancel me? That's okay, I'll just make a um, grape joke without the G. Hey Snowflake, in the real world, you don't get a participation trophy. Not everybody is a winner. There are no safe spaces. Screaming doesn't make you right. No one owes you anything. Crying doesn't solve problems. Nothing is free in this world. People are going to say things that you don't like and you are not special. In this video, I will not be using his name nor showing any like social media ads because I do not want to give him more clout on this video. That's not what this video is about. And a lot of people like this guy that we're reacting to today really make these types of videos just to get clout and that's all they care about, not the repercussions of their actions or how they are influencing people to act and think, none of that. So we're not going to be contributing to that today. And if you're watching this video, please do not go out and try and find this person. No, no freak, freak out. out. Guys like this lovely character really just want attention and they'll say anything that they can to get attention. When a hot person has her slash she in her bio, that is so suspicious, so weird. We don't like girls here, we hate them. They're like babies who learn that if they cry and make a scene, people will pay attention to them. Alpha male, anti-snowflake, and edgy opinion influencers like the one that we're reacting to today have really polarizing opinions, not because morally and ethically to their core they believe these polarizing opinions. No, they have these opinions because they're just so edgy and just so different from everyone else. They're willing to call it like it is. They're willing to say things people aren't daring enough to say because they are a man and living in the United States and practicing the freedom of speech, aka the freedom to say stupid things. They really think that they're doing something here with their edgy opinions, but in the end they're just the adult male version of the I'm not like the other girls or the high school teenager who refuses to like anything mainstream. They're I'm not like the other girls, but instead of girls it's I'm not like the other morally and ethically responsible individuals of society. But the reason why I'm making this video today isn't just to look at what these types of influencers are creating and say, wow, that's a shitty take. The reason why I'm talking about this today is when guys like the one we're reacting to make edgy content just to make people mad and grow their following through outrage marketing, what they end up doing in turn is teaching a ton of impressionable teenagers on the internet that it's okay to think this way and it's okay to hold these beliefs because look at this guy, he has a ton of followers and he thinks this thing too. This TikToker has 582,000 followers just through sharing his really shitty take. 582,000 people saw content like this. You have to stop telling men about your career and degrees. Those are qualities you find attractive in men. We don't care. We just want you to be pretty and nice to us. It helps if you know how to cook. And thought, wow, this dude is awesome. He is really saying something here in this and I'm going to follow him. So all of this is a way of gaining clout online that I think actually has a super damaging effect on society. 
mainly teenage boys. But most of all, this dude is just cringy. cringy. Let's see what's on the agenda today. Piss off teenagers on the internet. Okay. I feel like while he's making a video, he thinks he's changing the world with this revolutionary opinion. After making a video, he thinks he's just gonna step out into the world and an audience is going to follow and clap like the end of an inspiring movie. And he's gonna get up on a podium stage and be like, I dared to say the thing that is different from what other people think. I dared to challenge the snowflakes and the alt teenage girls who are running rampant on TikTok. I dared as a grown ass man to look at a camera and make fun of teenage girls. I had the balls to make fun of someone who recently died now when no one else would. Just died. I am a comedy revolutionary. I, I think that's what he genuinely thinks is going on in his head. When in reality, his content is just, just cringy. cringy. It's just cringy. Like you look ridiculous. You're a grown ass man on the internet saying things that 12 year old boys say. He really doesn't realize how embarrassing this is for him. Like, congratulations, ignorant teen boys follow you because they haven't matured enough in their life to realize the difference between dark humor and just being bigoted. And of course, some never do. But the rest of the world doesn't see you as edgy or different for pissing off all teenage girls on the internet. What are you doing? You just look silly. You look like a silly boy. Please stop, for your own sake. I'm sorry for the eyes of my viewers today. My eyes! But we are going to react to some of this cringe fest. People get exhausted trying to figure me out, and I just let them. Oh my gosh, he's so edgy and different, guys. No one can figure him out. I feel like his demographic is literally teenage boys who don't understand much about much and are just like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. He said it. He had the guts to say it. Wow, he is so edgy. I'm gonna make those same jokes too because this has how many views? At the time of screen recording, this had 26,000 views. That means what he's doing is acceptable, right? I can say it too. Gotta go fast. What jokes? So here's the thing about this TikToker that confuses me the most. His old username used to have jokes in it. I say old because he was actually banned once. His entire account that was basically a carbon copy of this new account was banned from TikTok because because apparently that's what happened. But that old username on his previous account had jokes in it. And he constantly, in all of his TikToks, says that he's making jokes. But my question is, where are they? Where, where are the jokes? And I understand humor is subjective, but still, objectively speaking, I cannot think something's funny and still understand it's a joke, but objectively speaking, where are the jokes? I'm starting to get concerned that this man has no concept of humor whatsoever. Humor isn't just saying something offensive or shocking and being a bad human. That's not what humor is. I understand how he might feel that way, considering a lot of comedians have been exposed for being bad humans, but you don't have to choose between humanity and humor. You can have them both. The Supreme Court, my jokes. Both ruthless. <laughs> I just feel like when he came up with that, he was like, I am a genius, yes. He's so smart too, clearly a highly intelligent human being who was like, the Supreme Court is without Ruth, ruthless. I, I see myself as ruthless. Oh my gosh, double meaning. There's a joke. Good job, buddy. Now that Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died, a lot of people on Twitter are sharing this old Harvard Law School photo of her saying it speaks volumes. And I have to agree, 
Judging from this photo, men are a lot better at getting into Harvard Law School than women. Oh my gosh, I'm so angry. You've made me so upset. Even though statistically, women perform much better in school. But no, you, you saw a photo, you say men in Harvard. I'm so, so offended. So hurt. You really did it to me. Look at me. I'm outraged. Very upset. Also, I think when he made that analysis, he missed a major key factor. Have you even seen the movie Legally Blonde? There's a woman and she gets into Harvard Law School. He has been majorly debunked. We're just so offended. Everyone's so offended and outraged. I just don't think people are that offended anymore. I think that in 2020 especially, there's just been so many like horrible people that have come out of the woodwork woodworks to say horribly offensive things that no one's really like offended anymore. They're just like, wow, a grown white dude being racist and sexist. We're so surprised. No one's surprised. We're just like, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. You have to stop telling men about your career and degrees. Those are qualities you find attractive in men. We don't care. We just want you to be pretty and nice to us. It helps if you know how to cook. I just imagine like a woman going into a job interview where like a man is interviewing and the man's like, so what is your education history or background or whatever they say in job interviews? And the woman who's being interviewed is like, well, I know you don't really care about that, but look at me, I'm pretty and I cook a good mac and cheese. So you should definitely hire me. And he's just like, wow, that's amazing. You're hired. I always wonder how this guy and guys like Russell Hartley imagine women actually live their life. Like, is this actually how men think women do things like job interviews? But if interviews were really like that, then I guess women would be living their life on easy mode. But sadly, that's not the case. I also think it's kind of a bad look for dudes to say that they don't care whatsoever about education or intellect or like personality. Like that's kind of super vain and vapid. Like that's more embarrassing for men than it is for women. Like you get that, right? A lot of you guys seem to be confused about what my page is about. I'm not here to be a right wing echo chamber and I'm not just a hate page against the left. I'm here to trigger snowflakes of all kinds to defend free speech and fight back against cancel culture. I'm an equal opportunity offender. That's what this flag represents to me. And if it means stepping on it to prove my point, then so be it. Oh my gosh, this guy is such a hero. I didn't even realize this until now. I completely misunderstood his content. He is here to fight and defend America itself against the ruthless snowflakes. He's here to battle those evil Twitter accounts with anime characters as their profile picture. None of us would be safe without this guy out here on TikTok making the content that he makes. He's not only making edgy humor, but he's saving America as we know it and fighting for free speech. Have you ever noticed that people that so intensely fight the freedom of speech usually are just fighting for their freedom to say really shitty and ignorant things? Like when a guy says a woman should be in the kitchen, no one comes and like covers his mouth or deletes posts where he says that or makes it so he can't say that at all. Instead, people just use their freedom of speech to respond and say, hey, I don't really agree with this. I think that's kind of a silly take on things. And all of a sudden they're like, freedom of speech. It's my freedom to say what I want. No one controlled you or limited your ability to say that thing. They just said back, that's a stupid thing to say. You are a warrior for those who want the freedom to say offensive things on the internet. Truly groundbreaking. And done. Now that my taxes are done, let's see what's on the agenda today. Piss off teenagers on the internet. Okay. Like, that's just sad. Like, I don't know, I can't help but feel really bad for him, but also kind of concerned. 
I, I can't help but wonder what's going on in his life or what's not going on in his life to the point where he feels like he needs to make fun of teenagers on the internet. Especially if you're literally an adult male and you have so many opportunities to like inspire the youth or create a better future for those the young and impressionable but instead you're like you know what i'm gonna teach them that it's okay to not be offended by the n-word and it's okay to tell women to just be pretty and cook like that's what you choose to do with your time as an adult male instead of inspire and create a better future. I can't help but wonder mentally what's going on with him internally to feel like he needs to act that way. Nick, you're a terrible person. Why do you say that? Because of all those terrible jokes you made. What jokes? Yeah, exactly. My thoughts exactly. What jokes? You know what jokes I'm talking about. The ones that were racist, sexist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic. Psh, nope. That was a different guy. Don't even try to gaslight me just because you changed your username. Yeah, but I never made any jokes that were homophobic. Wow, so funny and shocking and outrage and, and clever. He says he no make jokes that are homophobic, but... That means he's confirming he made all those other jokes about, like, that were sexist and stuff. Wow. Shocking. Shocking. But seriously, once again, where is the joke? Where are they? This entire time, I've been reacting to a lot of videos. I haven't found a joke. He spends so much time talking about his offensive jokes that I think he forgot to actually make them. But also on a real note to say that everything he's doing is just a joke. Really all it's doing is allowing him to like wipe his hands clean of all the toxic ideologies that he's spreading because he can be like, that's not my fault. I was only kidding. If people took me seriously, that's on them. This was just a joke. It reminds me of my childhood a little bit. This is a random story. And yes, I know I was a terrible older sister to my younger brother, but back in the day, if my younger brother and I got into a fight and it ended up getting physical and I like slapped him and he ended up crying, I'd be like, no, 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 it was only a joke. It was only a joke to try and get him to not go to my mom and like tell on me or whatever. And this reminds me of that. It's like the equivalency of that, of him like slapping people, causing damage, and then being like, no, it was just a joke. It's not my fault. I didn't do this. It, it was only a joke. Oh my gosh, women wear makeup. Multiple women wear similar makeup. Basic. You can't make fun of I'm not like the other girl girls when you're literally the dude version of that. You're like the I'm not like the other girls version of adult males. Like you can't, it, it doesn't work. Okay, I think if I watch any more of this cringy content, I'm literally going to get a migraine. So that's enough of that content for today. The problem with this type of content is it's literally become a social media strategy. People see guys like this making offensive content and they're like, you know what? That's working for him. He's getting followers. I'm gonna do it too. And it's creating these carbon copy clones of really douchey, alpha male, anti-PC, edgy content dudes. Pussy is not power. Just because she has a Venus flytrap doesn't mean you have to land your grasshopper in it. Because if you don't, guess what? She ain't got shit to eat. So yes, it can be power if you weaponize it. And it's become this blueprint for how to get followers off of outraging people. But the problem with that is in the meantime, you're letting all these teenagers who are on the app know as an adult that it's okay to think this way, to talk like this, to act in this way, which can have really damaging effects on society. Influencers are called influencers for a reason, as annoying as that name is. Whether you're influencing someone to buy a beauty product or to use an Instagram filter or pay an outrageous amount of money to go to some very blue watered island location, or you're influencing someone to think in a way that is just offensive and hurtful. 
Influencers do influence people, and there's a responsibility and a danger that comes with that. And it feels like the spread of these toxic influencers has made it so that those really obvious moral stances that we're all taught in like kindergarten, treat people the way you want to be treated, the golden rule, racism and bullying is bad, all of those moral stances that everyone was taught, all of a sudden the lines are being blurred as people are realizing that saying offensive and bad things gets them attention. It's hard to know what to do because if you overly react and share their name and share their face everywhere and give them more clout and attention, that might be falling into the trap and doing exactly what they want and encouraging the spread of more influencers like these people. But then if you don't talk about it at all and you don't talk about why it's wrong, the people who follow these people might never realize like, oh shit, this is toxic. This is not a good way to think at all. And that's the main reason why I'm talking about it today. I don't want TikTok teenagers thinking, oh, this guy's right because he has followers and he's got attention and anyone who disagrees with him is just a sensitive snowflake. We're not ignorant and bigoted. We're just defending America from snowflakes. When in reality, I just think it's an immature way of thinking. But for real though, where are the jokes? I don't see them. <laughs>